Greetings to you all from Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I teach musicology at the University of Michigan and where I made the acquaintance of a brilliant pianist named Jeanette Fang just a few short years ago. I thank Jeanette for her kind invitation to speak to you today. Nothing quite warms the cockles of a Beethoven nerd's heart like the performance of one of his early piano quartets. Why? because this was the first music Beethoven himself considered good enough to steal from later, once he got to Vienna. For example, this well-known tune. We may recognize this as the slow movement of the sonata in F minor, opus 2, number 1. It actually came from the C major piano quartet uh, that Beethoven wrote as an adolescent in Bonn. The first movement of that same piano quartet yielded a tune for a different sonata, opus 2, number 3. <laughs> Beethoven must have felt free to plagiarize from himself because there was never any thought of publishing these piano quartets. Indeed, they did not appear in print until a year after Beethoven's death. When they were written and why they were written have recently become interesting questions for scholarly discussion. Beethoven himself seems to have dated the autograph 1785 but we're not sure when he supplied that date or how accurate it was. Since he was never quite sure of his birth year, he was undecided whether he was 14 or 13 years old at the time of composition. On the title page, he corrected, corrected 14 to 13. Given the sophistication of the music, we may have difficulty believing either age. Already in the 19th century, one scholar noted strong resemblances between Beethoven's piano quartet in E-flat major, which you're hearing today, and Mozart's sonata in G major for piano and violin, Kirchel 379, resemblances that I'll get into soon. A hypothesis quickly came together around the following circumstances. Mozart's Sonata, written in 1781, was hot off the Viennese press, where it was published with two other sonatas as Mozart's Oeuvre de. Oeuvre is the French word for opus or work. Three years later, in Beethoven's hometown, Bonn, the elector, or a new elector, a new prince, came into power. Maximilian Franz, who was a great lover of Mozart's music and indeed wished to recruit Mozart to be his Kapellmeister in Bonn. Uh, and his musical tastes, including his preference for Mozart, now set the tone for Bonn's leading family. Bonn's premier music shop began advertising the works of Mozart, so that from 1784 on, Mozart could become a compositional role model for Beethoven. In 1785, the very next year, Beethoven wrote his three piano quartets, if that date on the autograph title page is accurate. Uh, and scholars, uh, and, and, and one of these quartets uh, was clearly based on a sonata by Mozart, Kirchhoff 379. 
So scholars set about finding other resemblances between Beethoven's other piano quartets and the other two Mozart sonatas that uh, were published together with Kirchhoff 379. Where there's a scholarly will, there's a scholarly way, and resemblances were found. So the piano quartets began to look like a huge homework assignment, whether imposed by a teacher or by Beethoven himself. Write three piano quartets, each based in some way on one of Mozart's latest sonatas for piano and violin. The problem is, no evidence survives that those sonatas of Mozart's were actually known in Bonn. So far, we're missing that smoking gun. Still, I can't help but think that young Beethoven ran across a copy of Kirchhoff 379 and tried to learn from it in composing the E-flat major piano quartet. For starters, they have the same unusual layout of movements. Both start with an adagio that is too long to be considered a slow introduction, but too short to be a complete movement by itself. If you're familiar with what musicians call sonata form, imagine an adagio that runs through an exposition and a development, and just as it seems to be preparing the recapitulation, it segues instead into an allegro in the parallel minor mode. Beethoven was so captivated by Mozart's adagio that he virtually quoted the opening gesture. Here's Mozart's opening. is different from Mozart's. 14-year-old Beethoven has introduced a new wrinkle, and that is how emulating a masterwork forces us to try something different and thereby to grow. Both of the allegros that come after this adagio half movement are hard-driving sonata form movements in triple time. Here's how Mozart's allegro begins. It's kind of a split thematic personality, emphatic beginning, plaintive continuation. The adolescent Beethoven isn't doing plaintive. Soon after the briefest of transitions, Mozart introduces a stormy secondary theme. Note the clattery accompaniment in the right hand. The melodic motive will be introduced in the bass of the piano. features clattery right hand accompaniment, melody in the bass, in the next theme that Beethoven introduces. <laughs> You may have noticed 
that Beethoven even takes his rhythmic cue from Mozart. Dom, da 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 dom, da 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 dom. I should stress that it was fairly unusual in the 1780s to start with a slow movement and continue with a fast movement in the parallel minor mode. The effect is like that of experiencing a gale force cloudburst in the middle of what one expected to be a sunny afternoon. Mozart cast his finale as a set of variations on a theme in 2-4 time marked Andantino Cantabile. The effect is supposed to be relief and contentment after the stormy central movement. Beethoven follows suit, varying a major mode theme in 2-4 time marked Cantabile. Here's how Mozart's theme begins. <laughs> Beethoven's begins. Perhaps the strongest point of resemblance between these finales is in their central variations. Mozart typically cast his central variations in the minor mode and Beethoven followed his lead here. As you listen to Mozart, note the turbulent accompaniment in the pianist's left hand and the dotted rhythm melody in her right. <laughs> as though we were being reminded in this central variation of the stormy central movement. You'll notice the same features in Beethoven's minor mode variation, jagged dotted rhythms over a bass seemingly a boil. <laughs> through both sonatas, phrase by phrase. I won't inflict that comparison on you. I will assert that Beethoven follows Mozart's lead closely enough in this quartet that his divergences from the model tend to seem like flaws by comparison. That said, before we accuse Beethoven of plagiarism, consider that emulation of models was once the most common way of teaching musical composition. As one 18th century theorist put it, it's okay to borrow so long as you repay with interest. Beethoven had chosen his model wisely and learned as much from it as he could at age 14. As I said, there was never any thought of publishing the result. Indeed, he would go on learning from that sonata of Mozart's, and especially the adagio half movement at the beginning. And he'd learn, he'd show the, the, the fruits of that of learning in works as various as the Opus 5 cello sonatas and even the Seventh Symphony. But that would be the subject of another lecture. Thanks so much for listening and enjoy the performance.